Right now, uh, around the world, there are about uh, a half billion people, um, give or take, people with diabetes. Half of those people with diabetes um, are going to develop problems with their, uh, with their nerves, with their sensation. And once people get an amputation, this problem is worse than cancer. Five years survival after uh, uh, an amputation is about 50%. Between 50 and 80%, this is worse. Breast cancer, five year survival is about 18%, give or take. Um, all cancers is about 30%. There is so much proof about how a podiatrist can help in essentially saving lives because if you think about the numbers you said before about you know the mortality rates after amputations. But our patients, because it doesn't hurt them, yeah. they're not thinking the same way. And so this kind of problem, what you can't feel, can hurt you um, because we're conditioned to react to pain uh, and to symptoms. And, and this sinister problem, this silent and sinister syndrome that uh, is kind of alliterative, uh, is, is what is so dangerous about diabetes. And it is why um, one of the biggest uh, uh, complications that's associated with hospitalization you know, are for foot problems. Not for high blood sugar, not for a heart attack, not for a stroke. Armstrong, welcome. It's an honor to have you on our podcast in Cyprus, and it's an amazing experience for us. Oh, man, it's a pleasure to be here. This is absolutely great. And by the way, I know everyone can only see part of the studio, but this is about the coolest <laughs> studio on the planet. It's, uh, it's a man's cave, but don't say it, anything. No, no, this is a man bad. cave with a capital M, but it for, <laughs> I think for women, too. This could be a capital W or a capital M, so... Nice. Outstanding. Also, also I have uh, as my co-host for today, Georgia Lubetridi. Hello, Georgia, good evening. Welcome. All right. Okay, we're going to set up. Why do you need the co-host, by the way? Because uh, I'm going to set the rules first. Because She's I the know, co-host, not me. <laughs> I know almost nothing about podiatrics. But that makes at least two of us. <laughs> maybe that's why you need the third. So uh, my role today is to democratize knowledge okay is to make the knowledge and whatever you're gonna say you two guys you i have to be here to just make everybody understand what we are talking about so uh your guy i know is gonna do the the difficult questions the more uh, scientific questions i'm here to make it more simple for the for our audience first of all i wanted to know something about you um why you are here what's your background how did you start doing what you are doing now? Why yeah. you are excited of doing that? Right. Oh, I'm happy to talk about it. So, so I was born into this. My father uh, was a uh, a foot doctor, you know, and uh, this was the smartest guy I ever knew. And but he was the foot doctor, and it seems kind of odd and strange. But you know, we um, just finished a symposium uh, uh, today, and uh, I was talking about this very issue and. Um, you know, thinking about the foot, um, I can think of maybe two gifts at working on the foot. And again, we talked about this, your co-host and I talked about this earlier during the lecture. And, uh, you know, you know, the first gift is that, uh, uh, you know, in this era of, 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 I think a lot of hubris and chest thumping and testosterone, it's, uh, there's nothing, uh, that's more of a gift of humility than looking after someone's feet, right? I mean, to get down there and touch someone's foot uh, it immediately puts you in a in in a, in a humble position, and and that's true, right? It crosses all borders and time and religions. I didn't think about it. But no, no, I, now I, I'm getting the image. But but, but there, there you are, and you, and you listen. You're starting this podcast <laughs> at the bottom. You can only go up, <laughs> uh, and uh, and and that's the other thing. You know, it's uh, when you're working on this uh, foot at the end of the body, it gives you a great gift of uh, of perspective, right? And uh, and that's what we see. And and I've thought about that ever since I was just a little kid. I saw how he worked in California in his office and and could help people. Sometimes they would walk in hurting, 
um, and uh, they could walk out the same day immediately yeah. feeling better, which is, you know, for a kid or especially a teenager, you know, to get instant gratification, that's very potent. And uh, so you see that and then you add all of the other things uh, into the equation. Uh, and for me, it was, uh, I, uh, I, I loved it from the beginning. So uh, you study in university, you have mm. done masters, and yeah. you progress. Yeah, Tell I, me about this. Uh, well, journey. it's uh, you know, I guess I'm a kind of a professional uh, student, but yes. So I, 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 I went to. <laughs> you know, this is uh, the, the, I'm not. I'm an amateur uh, dilettante at pretty much everything. Uh, but, uh, but yes, I, I went to uh, university in Los Angeles. I studied uh, podiatry in a, in a beautiful San Francisco. Uh, if you haven't been, you should go. Uh, after that, I did my surgical training in Detroit, uh, Detroit Rock City, as they say. Um, and uh, uh, after that, did my uh, uh, fellowship training down in San Antonio. You're hearing that I'm kind of peripatetic. I don't know if that uh, translates well into Greek, but a peripatetic podiatrist. Uh, and then uh, uh, in San Antonio, uh, I was a fellow and stayed on uh, uh, as a young uh, academic assistant professor. Um, after that, uh, 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 traveled and spent a little time in, uh, uh, in Arizona, England, Chicago, back to Arizona, and now finally England Los Angeles. For, for universities or? To... Oh, just really for fun, just for, for fun. the weather. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. make a silly question just to understand. Yeah, do you believe that the, in USA they have much better universities about your specialization, mm. or is just happen to study only in, in USA? Well, I um, I'm not sure that anywhere. I think you sort of one of the big ideas is um, I like to kind of go where my uh, uh, mentors. Uh, Uh, you know, uh, take me, and I, I would always be reading about it, uh, people that I admired, and so I kind of went to them. You know, instead of uh, uh, I, I, I went to Muhammad instead of uh, you know <laughs> bringing the mountain to me. You know, and so, uh, so that was the uh, uh, idea. So I, I did my pilgrimage to England to spend time with uh, one of my mentors, a guy named Andrew Bolton in Manchester, and uh, another guy down in Wales, uh, 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 and. Uh, did some PhD and MD work there because a lot of the interest that I have, you know, not just in podiatry, but uh, really is in diabetes and wound healing and amputation prevention. And that was where a lot of stuff was happening. Uh, and it was uh, really an opportunity to try to go out there and uh, uh, work with them, maybe honor them, then sort of pay it forward. So, I wanted to ask you a few questions, mm. and I, I wanted to do so in a very casual manner because people are going to be watching this that don't know a lot of technicalities about this thing. For example, in Cyprus, people with diabetes, they, they go to their GP. Sometimes they go to the surgeon. They don't really go to a podiatrist. And and we've talked about during the, the seminar, we've talked about why we need to have this team looking after, you know, one person, one patient. And and my question to you is, why do, you, do we need so many people looking after one patient? Why, why do we need that? Why it's important? Well, look, I think as, um, as we're living longer, uh, you know, we're living longer um, with, with, with complications uh, of, uh, uh, of all kinds of, you know, cardiac complications, complications of cancer, complications of uh, uh, other types of uh, uh, vascular disease. And, and diabetes is another one of these uh, 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 sort of complications. And complications, the word complications has complicated in it. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, any woman or man that thinks that they can look after something by themselves and uh, that they are an island, not unlike Cyprus, but an island unto themselves. Well, I think that person probably, that's a little bit too overconfident. Um, I think that um, so many problems now in medicine, in surgery, um, in science, in politics, you know, all of these things require multiple Uh, women and men from multiple perspectives to come together to make a difference, and that even that's even true for the humble foot. Um, well, 
why do we need podiatry for the diabetic patient? I mean, people in Cyprus don't usually know that even a podiatrist is part of the diabetic foot team. So yeah. w- why do we need podiatrists to treat the diabetic foot? But again, you know, you wouldn't really think much about uh, feet with with diabetes in general. So let's talk about that first. So um, uh, what's the link here between the foot and diabetes? Well, um, right now uh, around the world, there are about uh, a half billion people, um, give or take, um, with billion. diabetes. Half billion, billion. Uh, people with diabetes. And that, uh, uh, and I know a billion is like the new million and like a trillion <laughs> is a new billion. But like yeah, a billion is a lot. But it is yeah, seven so, billion, so that's it's right. Like, it's a lot. It's a lot, and, and it's getting more. It's getting larger, not smaller. So, so there are about, give or take, maybe at least five hundred million people. It's just going to go up to maybe in the six hundreds uh, uh, over the next ten years. So six hundred, uh, six hundred million, million, uh, and so so a half. So this is more than a half billion people with diabetes around the world, um, and half of those people with diabetes um, are going to develop. Uh, problems with their uh, with their nerves, with their sensation, um, and uh, so you know, for us, right? If we get a problem like our shoulder hurts, we go to see the doctor. Our foot hurts, we go to see the doctor. Um, but imagine that you lost that uh, that gift of pain, and you know, and it is kind of a gift because it tells you when there's a problem. You know, um, so when you lose that gift. Um, you can uh, with diabetes. That problem is called neuropathy, and uh, about half of people with diabetes are going to get know, that. You know what is it, why it's easy to understand because most of the terms are in in Greek. So yeah, it's this okay. is, isn't this great? Yeah, uh, this is. And I am. Uh, <laughs> he's a big. Uh, he's a big fan of the language and the history and everything. His point um. of this. Let's get. Uh, let's get into um, what what causes this problem, because these people with diabetes they lose. The, the gift of pain, and they can wear a hole in their foot, just like we would wear a hole in a sock or a shoe. And this hole, this is called an ulcer, a diabetic foot ulcer. And this happens um, every second now around the world. And these wounds you know, that we develop, these diabetic foot ulcers that we see, happen silently. Our, our people don't feel it. And if you were to see this, if you were just to Google diabetic foot ulcer uh, while you're watching or listening uh, to this podcast, you'd, you'd be grossed out, right? You would, you would have a reaction to it. But our patients, because it doesn't hurt them, yeah. they're not thinking the same way. And so this kind of problem, what you can't feel, can hurt you um, because we're conditioned to react to pain uh, and to symptoms. And, and this sinister problem, this silent and sinister syndrome that uh, is kind of alliterative, uh, is, is what is so dangerous about diabetes. And it is why um, one of the biggest uh, uh, complications that's associated with hospitalization are for foot problems, not for high blood sugar, not for a heart attack, not for a stroke. The foot problem is the most common reason that someone with diabetes will end up in a hospital. So having said that, you know, that foot problems are one of the most common reasons that people with diabetes will end up in the hospital, how would you react if I said to you that podiatry is only available uh, if you pay for it privately and at the same fact, kind of, uh, at the same time, kind of alienated from all the other health professionals and the medical world. What do you think will happen to these patients? Well, I think they're going to get silent problems until they're not silent, Mm -hmm. right? And they'll wear a hole in their foot and uh, and this will get infected. This is just the natural history of the problem. Um, And then uh, um, once you get infected, about 20% of those infections end up in hospital, which is why Around the world, there's an amputation now every 20 seconds. And once people get an amputation, um, the this problem is worse than cancer. Five-year survival is um, after a, 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 an amputation is about 50%, between 50 and 80%, depending on the other problems that you have, uh, the, other, the other medical problems you have. So this is worse Breast cancer, five-year survival is about 18%, give or take. Um, all cancers is about 30%. Lung cancer is maybe 70% when it's at bad and pancreatic cancers. So this is as and- bad or worse. 
But if we were having a podcast about cancer, everyone would know yeah. about cancer, right? And they would know they have to go to see their cancer doctor uh, or their cancer clinician or something. But for diabetes uh, and uh, um, and their feet, it, they just don't think about it. Why? Because it's quiet. It's silent. And you know, if you were like an evil deity and you were trying to sock it, you were trying to really stick it to humanity and try to and try to hurt people, you wouldn't pick cancer. You wouldn't pick HIV AIDS, even though these are horrible problems. You wouldn't you even would, pick COVID. You would pick diabetes. You'd pick diabetes and you'd pick the foot because it's at the end of the body. It's covered up by a shoe or a sandal. And then you take away all the pain. And what do you have? You have something that just where people just uh, really just wear a hole in themselves. And, and then no one really cares about it. They don't because in Cyprus, it's, it's very, very, very common. Mm. For example, a patient comes into clinic and I say, do you like, do you take any medication about anything? And they say, oh, you know, I take those you know, sugar tablets, but I don't, I don't really have sugar. They call right. it sugar in Cyprus. It's just, you know, it's just a little hype, but I don't have diabetes, but they take, you know, medication yeah. for diabetes. Yeah. Their diabetes may be like in the two hundreds or mm. so, uh, smoking, drinking, and the rest of the yeah. things. And they don't, they, they just say, I have a bit of sugar yeah. and, and that's about it. It's just, Straight out the window, you know. Again, this problem is uh, it, um, it's quiet, and and it people don't think of it like these other, you know, big problems of our time. And yet, um, here it is, and uh, uh, and and it is a and it is not a problem until it becomes a problem. And this is, and you know, as human beings, you know, if we want to talk about the big idea, I think as human beings, we are really good. At responding to uh, emergencies, right? You hear a you hear a bang, uh, you hear a or you see a or there's a there's a there's a there's an explosion, there's a fire. Is that only on the Western culture? Because in the Eastern culture, they have prevention, so they have steps before something yeah. happens. I, yeah, I, I I learn about that idea that we go to the doctor if something happens to us, and this is on the Western. Welsh society or yeah. the Eastern society, they have different mindset. Yeah, I think I'm just. Well, I do, think do I you believe it's like I, that. Or? I, I look. I've I've black. I was just in Singapore last week, and I was uh, as well. We were talking about this exact same thing, and yeah. and um, I think that that's right. I think that uh, collectively, I think culturally. Uh, maybe maybe a uh, someone who is practicing maybe uh, uh, a uh, what we would now call. It's not fair to call these things, uh, you know, they're just non-Western, and but that doesn't mean they're they're bad. No, no, uh, no. but the, but I think that we can learn a lot uh, from uh, uh, from these things culturally. But amazingly, <clears throat> where some of the worst things um, from uh, from kind of the Western diet and other things have sort of emerged in uh, uh, everywhere. Everywhere. everywhere, and so for so right now. In China, there are maybe uh, 130 million people with diabetes, and um, and these people are getting, you know, they've adopted some of them have adopted a different diet and a different lifestyle than they used to have, um, and so that is costing them limbs and lives. Same thing in South Asia and in India, especially um, where you have at least 100 million people now, okay. uh, give or take, with diabetes, and and so even there. Where you might have a uh, you know Chinese me uh, medicine, where or Ayurvedic medicine in South Asia, these sorts of things are a little bit different. Uh, they're not seeping into the uh, to to the best of of care in terms of prevention like we'd want to see. But the good news to your question is that a lot of this is preventable. A lot of it. It, it starts just by getting in to see your team and and here. Just to get in to see about that, uh, because just, I was thinking about what your yes said. Yeah, and my background is marketing. Mm. I don't know about USA. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I believe in Cyprus. Uh, probably it's a marketing thing as well. Yeah. Why? Why I'm saying that? Because I was thinking, ah, how regularly you go to the dentist to see your teeth? 
You go, you yeah. go yeah, every six months or a, a year. Yeah. Why is not the same happening about podiatrics? Yeah. I think it's, I think because, you know, it's kind of a new um, profession. Um, we we only have about 70 people practicing in Cyprus and it's only been 10. I can do your marketing if you want. Yes, sure. <laughs> yeah. no pro- I'll, I mean, I'll, 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 the president's I, I... here actually. The president of the association is somewhere here, so we can sort that out at some point. Uh, but I mean, yeah, um, if I'm if I'm being totally honest, then Professor Armstrong, we we have talked about this before. The general uh, consensus is that we feel a little bit bullied by the rest of the by, by the rest of the medical world, world, if you like. So we feel a little bit tucked in the corner, pretend they're not there, they don't know how to do anything. Uh, and to be honest with you, our role is not really recognized. And that's why, you know, there are so many, um, there's so much proof about how a podiatrist can help in essentially saving lives. Because if you think about the numbers you said before about, you know, the mortality rates after amputations, and not just that, you know, if you think about how a person lives and we are talking about Cyprus now that it's not very friendly to people with wheelchairs or prosthetic limbs mm. or whatever. Um, what is the quality of life of a person in Cyprus that fails to receive podiatry services that could potentially save his limb and obviously maybe his life in the next five years? So why do you think that? Why do you think we are so left behind in this specific country? And is it the same in USA or other countries? Well, I think it's just, I think these things happen at different times, mm-hmm. right? And and I don't think that there is something uniquely horrible about, mm-hmm. about right, about, about, about this. There might be uniquely horrible about this time and the, the sequence of events, but there are so many great things here, right? I mean, I, I think the great uh, outweighs the the bad uh and uh um and so i think here you're right this i don't think this may be an issue with marketing more than medicine yeah I and that, and, uh, and and because look we all know that it's important to be able to move through the world and when you can't move through the world and when you take that away it it makes you feel less than a person and you feel uh alienated you feel shunned you feel like a like a modern day leper right you know and um it's funny because people with leprosy really people with leprosy and you see you you see i do the same thing we, we laugh i laugh about leprosy too and people with leprosy develop the same kind of wounds yeah that people with diabetes get yeah, and, but- and and these people are they were biblically Ostrac- the ostracized. They were yeah. uh, they were uh, ostracized from uh, from uh, society because there was a thought that they were lesser than or something, and and this is what happens to these patients. And I think to another extent, you know, the foot is often ignored uh, in the rest of medical school, uh, and most doctors, you know, they'll just uh, it, it's not that they blow it off. There's a lot to know, um, but. It's just something that uh, that has not been focused on, like the other things that are really important, like the head, like the heart, uh, like sure. the rest of the body. Um, and then you uh, you know put it at the end of the body and you cover it up with a shoe, and it becomes decidedly unsexy. But look, I, I think that this is something that I think uh, can can be changed, but it ha- the only way to change it is what you're doing now. Is talking about it and talking about the fact that it, it, these folks with diabetes don't need to get uh, don't need to to, to get amputated um, uh, in every single circumstance, and almost every single one of those is preventable. And we could probably prevent. I mean, our goal sure. right now is to prevent uh, amputation in people with diabetes and eliminate it over the next generation. And we think we can do it, but it starts with the most simple things like just getting in to see your foot doctor. If you do that, along with seeing one other member of the diabetes team, how's this for marketing? The risk for you uh, 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 losing your leg uh, is dropped immediately by anywhere from on the low end 20% to on the high end 80% over the next six years. And 
you extend life in this patient population. Sure. So movement is life. And I think podiatrists keep people moving. Right. Yeah. The, the idea, just to make it more simple and go a little bit further from diabetes, why someone has to visit the podiatric in general? Because if you get that habit and you visit your podiatric every <laughs> six months, every year, then it's going to come closer to you to prevent any possible uh, diabetes or whatever. Maybe I can with. answer from a C Cyprus perspective. No, I mean, I, I need to know both um, because I, I want to know this too. A, this is yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, in Cyprus, as I mentioned before, is obviously the financial part. So um, why not? Oh, I didn't ask why not to visit. I I ask why you gonna visit. You have to visit. Or why you have to, to visit. visit? It's good to visit. It's good to visit because prevention is better than cure. Because everything that we spoke about before about the diabetes and the complex things that happen to your feet and can lead to a lot of bad stuff happening. I mean, if you talk to an old Cypriot who has diabetes now, they will probably be scared about, oh, you know, I knew someone and my neighbor's cousin's wife yeah. had her foot chopped off be because of diabetes. But still, they... It, it could be the fact that they are sometimes phobic, you know, or it could be the fact that they just want to ignore it and hope for the best, or it could be the financial part. And um, they just, in, in Cyprus, people go to other specialties, but all the other specialties don't see as many feet as we do. We see, you know, a lot of pairs of feet every single day and no we don't mind if they're a bit dirty and we don't mind if they smell a bit that's that's what we do because a lot of people are you know a lot of people are very self-conscious you know they will apologize and they will say oh i just washed my feet and they blah 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 so yes anything is anything that's wrong with the feet you you do need to see your specialty especially so whether that is hard skin or just something wrong with the nails or something wrong with the bones. If you don't visit the specialist, then you don't know what's going on. So anything really, and especially people who have, med who take medication or have, you know, general health issues and not just diabetes. I mean, heart issues, even things that I'll tell you one thing that I get a lot in clinic. I ask people, what sort of medication are you on? Because, you know, if they are taking aspirin or other medication, it does relate to the feet. And they say, well, I take nothing for my feet. Why, why do you care about, you know, the antiplatelets and the aspirin and I'm what have you? I'm the guy who asked that question. Yeah, so <laughs> exactly. They, they don't know that a lot of things can affect the feet that are away from the feet. Like the brain, for example, if a person has like... Um, a, a, a neurological disorder like a, a MS or Parkinson's or a stroke or a, after a car crash or anything like that, it will affect the feet. Yeah, it will affect the feet in, in a lot of ways. I don't know if you want to... Well, I, I you said it. This is uh, this is absolutely right. I think the bottom line is for people listening at, um, in Cyprus and, and beyond, your feet... Um, in general, let's let's take let's take away that neuropathy and the diabetes. Your feet shouldn't be hurting you, and if they are, you should go in and see your podiatrist. Now, because that so that's that's for sure. If you're uh, working every day and your feet are bothering you, you ought to uh, go in and see uh, your podiatrist because she or he uh, can, I think, go a long way to helping you move through the world pain free. So that. I think is the most basic and most fundamental thing someone has to visit the podiatric guest. Yeah. And and so that it is just to help them move and to help them move through the world because that's look, you, you don't get uh, uh any more fundamental uh than being uh bipedal, right? If you're a if you're a human, uh this is uh, what uh, what makes us human is uh is is having two feet and moving through the world and 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 without that you take that away and you take away a little bit of what it is um and so it, that's where it all starts right and so and the other thing is all of this stuff just like you heard from Georgia that was terrific i mean this is all uh connected um and uh keeping your feet together is like having a Good pair of tires on a car. Yeah, uh, definitely. you know you can have the fanciest car in the world, and, and you can got... you can have a good machine like 
with lots of horsepower, mm. but if the wheels aren't working, then you can't go anywhere with that machine, can you? So, and you know what an exquisite machine uh, foot is, right? I mean, it's 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 extraordinary. You have what twenty six bones, and you know you have you have a good percentage of the bones in your body and joints in your body are in your foot. You have the largest tendons of the body all the way down there. And it's a machine, but we just cover it up with a shoe or a sandal and we don't think much about it until until it hurts us. But I think you can really make a difference there. So that's in general. But if you have other complications, other common complications that people will develop as they age, like diabetes, it is essential, essential. that you see, that you see yeah. uh, a podiatrist because it is quite literally a limb um, and life-saving because that that person, she or he, can get you um, hooked up with the rest of the team, and that could be not only your diabetologist or your or your GP, uh, but also your vascular surgeon um, or uh, others, your cardiologist, your neurologist, uh, that are, are essential to keeping you moving through the world. All right? Can we do some? some can you bust some myths? Mm -hmm. Because I have in my mind that. All the times I hear I that like all the nerves are ending to the feet, and you have all these Chinese oh diagrams yeah. that you press this and you press oh, that. All the reflexology? Yes. Yeah, you Is know, that, yeah. have any truth or is over? over um, uh, I think that uh, I'm not sure about all the nerves ending in your feet. I think some people that have a lot of pain will uh, can feel that. But what I can tell you is, is that I think, you know, sometimes we're trained to uh, to sort of uh, poo poo, uh, <laughs> if you will, I don't know what the Greek word for that is, or <laughs> through poo poo, uh, the a uh, uh, when someone talks about reflexology or something like this as a so called alternative uh, or complementary medicine, but I I think that uh, th there's there's likely some truth to the matter um, there, that uh, uh, that focusing on the foot. Maybe not focusing on some weird homunculus on the yeah, bottom of the foot, exactly. but focusing on the foot um, and uh, uh, and its overall function, I think, is a net positive. Um, and so I think that that is true. And it's also true that there are likely uh, acupressure sites that we don't entirely understand well in the rest of medicine and surgery um, and mechanics that uh, that complementary medicine, including um, uh, acupuncture, including uh, um, the other aspects of care, can probably teach us. All right. I think it's mostly, um, you know, I, it's, reflexology uh, supports that every part of the foot uh, corresponds to one organ or one part yeah. of the body. I, I don't think that is, you know, how it works. I think that uh, generally it's a psychosomatic thing. So it's like if you have a full body massage, you feel that those happy hormones come up and those happy hormones, what they do is that they, 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 they are, they are pain relief. Yes. In essence, they are, aren't they? I mean, yeah. they are true pain relief. So what you get with reflexology and all that, you know, um, massaging of the feet and feeling nice and all that psychological blissfulness mm. is likely what causes you to feel right. better. But yeah. still, it's a marketing for you if they mention your name, fit, so it's yeah. marketing. Yeah. Sure. The other question is that I'm coming from fitness background, and I know that brands, they have all these specific system of their uh, shoes yeah. that and they every every version of the shoe is a little bit different all these systems air system or whatever they call them they are helpful or they are just more branding than uh, marketing than yeah that's than a great that's a that's a great question i i think the answer to your question is yes, yes. to to both <laughs> i i think that some of them are helpful um, I think there's probably a lot of marketing as well, because of course, look, you have to just like with, well, you know, it doesn't matter if you're using iOS or Android, or even if you have an old bricked Nokia in your drawer there, <laughs> uh, you know, there's a next year's model and there's a last year's model and next year's model, uh, you talk about marketing, you know, has to have something new, uh, and something new may be new or it may not be new. It may just be uh, a different kind of wrapping. Um, but look, just because, uh, it's new doesn't mean it's better. 
but sometimes it is. Um, and I think the recommendation I would give women and men that are popping you know, into a new pair of shoes is, first of all, look, listen, if you want to get some new shoes, God bless you. Go for it. It makes yeah, you feel better. The, the thing Just, is that is they are way more expensive than the other because mm. they have this system. And this, yeah. for me, it was very helpful. Very yeah. helpful. The, the, then there you are. Um, and I think that's I think that's the answer. I think um, material science, uh, actually, thanks to our spending billions of dollars, uh, you know, on the next Jordans, uh, you know, or uh, you know, or, or on the next uh, uh, Hoka's or whatever we're getting, are um, is great because it, it fuels a lot of R and D in uh, uh, kind of the different uh, these different products in material science, and and we're sort of the beneficiaries uh, of that. So I think that um, a, a lot of this actually can be helpful in in stopping um, uh, the uh, stresses from going through your body um, in a way and changing your the way that your foot hits the ground and reducing some of that shock back up into the rest of your body into all the other joints uh, uh, further up the chain that are connected to your feet. I'd be interested to hear what you're thinking. I think, you know, you're right. Uh, I think it's not always black or white, mm. and you always, you know, some sometimes they do put a bit of salt, like change of colors, maybe a fancier name, maybe a different kind of model. But it, in the end of the day, it's it's a bit of a trial and error, isn't it? I mean, you have to try and see. Maybe this shoe is good for you, but not good for the person next to you. You know. So generally speaking, yes. We are seeing a lot of changes in uh, materials and 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 the likes, but uh, I think that um, you know changing from one model immediately to the other, like you do with the iPhones, it doesn't really change yeah. a lot of things, you know. I was very close to get a um, distribution for Cyprus for a company that has uh, sole for the for the shoe. Uh huh. That they have all these something like spikes, yeah, right. That they they create blood circulation. Yeah, ah, that I is know beneficial, or still it's again more marketing than. Um. So the the answer is that it it's probably again this isn't the answer you want, but it's probably both. All right. Um. There's there's in, a lot of it is just baloney. I mean, a lot of it does not seem to have any effect. Uh, or there may be a placebo effect. Okay. But, however, however, there are some data to sh suggest that some of these uh, different insoles and some of these products that give you uh, that that actually stimulate the bottom of your foot may actually uh, tr transiently, just temporarily, improve your balance. Right. Um, and and so in doing that. That's pretty great, and there are also uh, some insoles that give little stimulation to the bottom, like electrical stimulation and things like that. And we've used things like that on people with diabetes and neuropathy, and sometimes we can try, kind of temporarily improve some of that sensation. So all of this, some of it may sound just like uh, hocus pocus, mm -hmm. uh, which some of these things are. And I'm familiar with what you're talking about because we actually studied some of these uh, magnetic. Uh, insoles, which also had these bumps on the bottom of them. And we were actually kind of excited because we thought maybe they were going to be providing some energy-based uh, uh, therapy, which might mitigate uh, pain. We didn't see that in what we studied right. back then. But what we have found is that some of these other stimulation kind of insoles may be somewhat helpful. And we'll see how this uh, you know works over the long term. Uh, and uh, I'd be interested to hear what you say, uh, Georgia. Well my answer is probably the same as before then that it, it's no harm of on trying you know maybe they will help you maybe not but i think that in these types of uh, things i think that the placebo effect is very strong i i truly believe that sometimes you know you you kind of and and it's a true effect i mean it does happen in, in many happy, yeah happy. exactly it, it, so i think it's if placebo, it's yeah. exactly so for me it's not a bad thing to try and if it works then it does you know okay i have and now a section that i get some questions mm. from my wife oh because great because if i don't mention my wife she's gonna kill me <laughs> this is always a I, I have to mention I say here it? at least once in i every feel podcast. you you haven't Otherwise told us anything about tanya though dr armstrong yes. My mm -hmm. long-suffering, much better half is here in the studio with us. 
uh, Tanya, and she, and and uh, she's uh, uh, spectacular. All right. Jeez. Can I ask common question about pediatrics? Ma uh, sorry. Podiatry. Po podiatry. 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 Yes. Do you know, it's like me trying to pronounce Greek, can I tell you? Because, you know, I like when I say Achilles, it should be Achilles. You know, and or it's like this, you know, it's like, it's like you just have to go, you just start extending stuff initially uh, rather, than, uh, 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 ra ra rather than at the end. But whatever you say, podiatrist or podiatrist, yeah, but, but, we're I, good. We had the same terminology about aerobic exercise. Yeah. It's it's aerobia in Greek, uh -huh. and then we make it aerobic, and then we have to use the, the, the English term. <laughs> Isn't aerobic. that terrible? It's that terrible. you have to re-import yeah. it. Yes. I'm saying, you know, that is that is embarrassing on, on behalf of <laughs> an, a, a, English and, 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 people. <laughs> uh, Anglophonic world. Good. I want to say, and by the way, here we go, Anglophonic. Anglophonic, yeah. Uh, ang Anglophilic, or uh, uh, for that first a Hellenophile, I want to apologize. No, don't worry. Not no. just about podiatrists <laughs> or podiatrists. So my or wife, even pediatrists or podiatrists. Podiatros. There Podiat we are. That's podiatric. nice. That podiatric. sounds better. It, it sounds has to more be podiatric. Not... Anyway. Yes, it's just, you know, that's how we say it in English. So it's kind of changing it back to English again. It's, it's a whole mess if you ask me. It's a whole lot mess. All Can right, I tell you my something? Wife. I've been awake for like 36 solid hours and I don't even know what time it is. So I'll say whatever you want to say. The wheels Sorry. are already okay. off the wagon. Uh, on no, it's this nice, podcast. nice, nice. Uh, my wife is for pharmacies, okay? Yes, so yeah, you told me. This, I, this the is great. great question. The sixth next question. Awesome. Are, are these things the, that she might find in the pharmacy? Like, like foot stuff? They are, they are people asking her all the time. Awesome. The first question is, how do you treat fungal infection if I'm, re I'm writing, I'm reading, yeah. you know, right? Okay, so athlete's foot. Uh, I, I'm happy to talk about it. Georgia, Keep athlete's it. foot. No, we want to hear from a from a, a Greek uh, podiatrist more than an. Uh, you have uh, to an, see your podiatrist right, because yeah. it depends. Sometimes you get a fungal infection and you get a bacterial infection at the same time. Ah, you know? there you go. See, that's so, subtle, but that's true. Yeah, it's true. That's called a so, super infection. Okay, I don't I don't expect all the answers to be go to your podiatric. Okay, you have to yeah. ask, answer so, at so, least so one let's, question. So 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 there are so there are uh, there are over the counter therapies um, that that can be helpful. In treating, um, in treating fungus or athlete's foot, depending on the type of uh, a, um, athlete's foot, um, and th the good news is is that it's eminently treatable, um, and, uh, and so that is so those sorts of things you could probably get at the pharmacy. If, sure. however, if, however, when you pick those up, and I'm not sure what is available over the counter or by prescription in Greece, but what I can tell you is that there are some that are. That are uh, that have um, really proven good quality data to support them. Uh, if that is not helpful, I would definitely go in and see your podiatrist. However, there are plenty of times when someone may uh, come in looking like they have athlete's foot, like uh, like uh, foot uh, foot fungus, but what they really have uh, is uh, eczema. Uh, which okay. is another kind of dermatologic condition, which a podiatrist, she or he can easily kind of diagnose between those two. So so the information for the people, it has to be first go to your podiatric and then yeah. ask him what is what the treatment and then go and treat it. Yeah, I think that's the answer. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but, uh, but um, you know, uh, look, I think that for things like that, it's probably okay to... Uh, do a little bit of exploration. You know, you probably do that with your GP before you go to see her or him. But I would say that if you really want to get to the uh, ground truth and you're, uh, I, I think you'll probably find that uh, you'll probably save time and money by getting in to see your, your the podiatrist. Next question, which is it related? Is there any natural way to treat them or you have to go and get pills? For a, a skin fungal infection, yes. you mean? Yes. No, skin skin fungal infections rarely need you know oral medication to treat. They they you usually treat them with topical ointments and creams and what have you. But there are several um, things that you can try that have antimicrobial and antifungal um, properties, like uh, usually vinegar, for example, okay. is a, it can can do something like that. But but generally speaking, you know, because you sometimes you might get an allergy or a skin reaction from things like that. It doesn't really mean that if they are natural, 
they can cause pro problems. There are natural things like um, lots of oils and things like that that can act as bad things. You know, it doesn't matter that they are natural. So yeah, exactly. You mentioned like vinegar, and that that's uh, obviously something that can be helpful for 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 certain you know um, bacteria or uh, uh, or for uh, 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 some fungi, but you wouldn't want to put it on your foot. Um, and have that the only thing that you do, because yeah. if you do that, then you'll probably end up drying your skin a lot more. <laughs> and then you're going to end up having something that kind of looks like fungus on top of that. And then it just makes it confusing. Yeah. Just go to the professional. All right. The other question is that they come to my wife and ask them, is that a proper way to cut the nails, especially for your kids? This yes. is something that the podiatric can, can learn mothers mm. how to do that. Actually, it's very straightforward. You, this is one thing you don't have to go to mm -hmm. a podiatrist to tell you. It's cutting in a straight line, you know, because most people, what they do is that they cut the nail in a curved way, really, or they cut the whole white bit off, which you don't, you don't really have to cut the whole white bit off. You have to cut the nail uh, to be the same with your skin. So not shorter than the skin and not longer than the skin and in a straight line. Okay. I mean, apart from that, you don't need any special instructions. It's, it's to... like life. So to go from yes. A to B, the <laughs> fastest way is straight line. Yeah? The trouble not is always. we never go in a straight line, yeah. do we? In life, <laughs> this is really the problem. I think that, listen, that's not a marketing question. That is a philosophical question. I think you're a philosoph <laughs> philosopher. Uh, and uh, that, but uh, what I'll also tell you, though, Im really importantly, is if you have diabetes, um, and you have sensation, you still have enough sensation to protect yourself. You probably can still keep cutting your nails, but if you lose sensation or if you have any vascular disease, do not do this. Okay. And please see your podiatrist because we uh, actually just before I left here uh, a couple of days ago, I think it was a couple of days ago in Los Angeles, I. I was in the operating room uh, much of the evening because of a patient uh, that actually uh, developed a rip-roaring, necrotizing infection uh, because he was cutting into the side of his nail, um, and uh, and and they couldn't feel anything. And uh, um, and again, you're having a reaction to this, but the patient didn't. Uh, Wait he was till just you doing, see the He pictures, was just doing, you know, you know kitchen. He was just doing, you know, kind of kitchen surgery on himself, and and I. By the way, we would do the same thing. I, I would do yeah. the same thing if it didn't hurt me. Uh, I, uh, but uh, that's the problem, and this is the thing that I think in not only in Cyprus but around the world, people just have to understand this. These things, uh, especially if you have diabetes, uh, should be sorted out. Great questions. How do you know that your kid has a flat feet? Kids have flat feet uh, until about the age of, uh, I don't know, what would you say, like sometimes six, yeah. five and a half. It's not the standard, you know, but uh, if they're over six uh, and they still don't have an arch, it, it's not... It's not really a pathology to have flat feet, is it? I mean, no. I think I think uh, early on uh, these kids' feet are fat, flat, and kind of floppy, right? And just because they are doesn't mean that you you have to be scared. Um, there are um, um, there. Are, however, um, if your little one is having trouble. Um, at school, kind of uh, 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 or walking, and you feel like there's some sort of delay. This is a really important time to be talking to your pediatrician, and then having her or him maybe send them on uh, to see the uh, podiatrist or uh, the uh, 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 or the pediatric uh, orthopedist. Uh, so the the other question was, what's the difference between a wart and a cord? So a wart is. A, a lesion, like a, something on your skin caused by a virus, the HPV virus. Uh, so it, it, it's it's a lesion caused by a viral infection, in simple words. Uh, a corn is just an area. It's usually somewhere that gets a lot of pressure. So usually under the feet, but if you have like flexed toes like this, it can be on top of the toes or on the tips of the toes. And it's it's practically an area of very high pressure where the skin becomes really, really hard and it, it kind of becomes a bit triangular. So like a cone shaped hard mm -hmm. skin that can sometimes press on nerves and you can get a, 
Yeah. So the, so the answer then is exactly that. Uh, warts are viral infections, although they can look just like a callus. I mean, it could be re almost indistinguishable. The only uh, way sometimes to be able to tell the difference is actually to, in, to inspect them, to look at the location, just like you heard. And to treat them. And to treat them. And sometimes you, if you trim them down, you might see little pinpoint bleeding mm -hmm. in, the, uh, uh, in, the, in the wart versus the callus. And this is a very, very Cypriot question, mm. okay? Very, very Cypriot question. So we have a lot of women, I don't know if we have a lot of men doing that, putting gel on their uh, nails. Mm. And then after that, they have a lot uh, this of is so, This is not sounding very Cypriot to yeah, me. A, this is sounding like kind of natural all yeah, over the place. All over the world, yeah. yeah. What, what's the, what's the um, advice you're going to give to these women that they... They use all these gels. Is there any way to to avoid it? To avoid not having, for example, um, fungal uh, infections yes, yes, and yes. things like that. Yeah. So what what happens is that the gel is like a material that is very occlusive. So it kind of uh, seals everything on the nail surface. So if you have any type of bacteria or a fungal infection, and you put that it on and you leave it on for a long time and the fungal infection what does it like it likes a dark uh, warm uh, place with no light kind of like the studio yeah <laughs> something like that so i mean it, it's not i'm not going to say oh my god stay away from gel toes you know but just make sure that you change it often like at least once a month you change it. So even if something is brewing, even if something is starting, then you can yeah. treat it. And then if nothing is going on, then go ahead and put another one on. And you know what? Listen, I, I think when it comes to all this stuff, uh, you know, I think you do you. You should, if you're feeling like you want to, you know, uh, uh, put on that uh, lacquer, then go ahead. But just understand that, you know, sometimes there's a low risk. It's not a super high risk. It's no. not like it's not like you know your feet are going to fall off if you put this kind of thing on. And God willing, that's the biggest problem that you have because this is something that your uh, uh, foot specialist can sort out. Uh, you know, you know, uh, pretty well. Great question, though. So I want to ask a final question. Oh, and say. Based on what you saw in the last few days and what we've talked about, uh, how do you see the future of, of the profession in Cyprus in like in the next decade? What, what do you think the podiatry will be in the next 10 years in Cyprus? Yeah. Well, I look, I think you have a, a cadre, a cohort, if you will. That's Latin rather than Greek. But I think you have a, a, a of... A, uh, of of women and men that are supremely well trained that that I that I uh, met that are um, and that are distributed across the entire country um, that want to help people right and I think uh, uh, what you have right now is um, I think what I foresee especially with the enthusiasm that I saw from the other clinicians in there uh, from plastic surgeons to uh, members of uh, 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 re members representing the Ministry of Health to members. Uh, representing uh, uh, a vascular surgery, that there is an enormous amount of enthusiasm. Uh, and I think what we're probably going to be seeing is slowly but surely um, uh, people uh, starting to understand the value of having a foot specialist on the team. It would seem here, sitting around a table, that this should already be, this should already exist. Uh, yeah. But it doesn't. And it's no one's fault. It's not like there's some evil cabal sitting around <laughs> trying to sock it to humanity's maybe, feet. Maybe there is. But, but, yeah. But <laughs> but the good news is, I think what it takes is, it just takes, uh, uh, you know, tenacity, right? It just takes, just keep working at it to try to make a difference. Because the good news is, is that y you keep people moving through the world and you do that as well as anyone in the world. And uh, allowing that to happen is what it's all about. And if you just make it about the patient. If you make it about the person, then you're always going to win. So the government accept podiatry to be on GC. Did they give you uh, give us any timeline when they're going to be? Well, not really, no. But we have, let's say, shaken hands on these, so it's getting done. So I don't know the the this when's. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. it's 
it's great news. Um, you know, although we 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 don't feel it's enough, but we have agreed with them that we will, you know, keep talking about it and keep trying to get more uh, more things for patients because at the time being it's only very specific patients. So only patients who have not just diabetes because it's a big number in Cyprus, they have to have a specific problem with their diabetes, a specific problem with their rheumatoid arthritis. So not anyone. So for example, if a person has uh, issues with their blood flow, so vascular problems, but they don't have diabetes, they're not eligible. No. I understand. Okay, at least on the system we have physio now. Yeah. And you see, exercise has to be prescribed as well. Yeah. So it's it's a good news that you are going on your sea. And the other idea, except of marketing, which I'm here to help, uh, it's the centralization. As we have a discussion with another doctor, is to have a common um, communication. Let's say have great communication between you in Cyprus. Yeah. So in order to exchange knowledge, Sure. And create events or symposium yeah. or bringing guys like Professor uh, Armstrong, Professor Armstrong <laughs> which is it's great to exchange knowledge to come as a community that this is gonna really help you. Yeah, I, I, I'll give you an example. Um, just this morning, uh, we were at the the last this last talk, and there was a plastic surgeon in there. He's awesome. This guy's great, and he came up to me like uh, attacking me from behind uh, in a nice way, <laughs> not like. A, uh, and he said, "Oh, Armstrong, it's just so great to see you." And he said, "I saw you lecturing with your partner uh, uh, Joe Mills, who's a vascular surgeon, because I work really closely with Joe Mills, uh, my one of my partners is a vascular surgeon in the United States, and and you gave this lecture uh, uh, in uh, uh, Yokohama, Japan." Back in 2012, and I was so inspired by this, I or I went back and in six months I started uh, the first Cypriot uh, team for diabetic foot complications. And he has uh, a podiatrist with, with whom he works and a nurse with whom he works as well. Uh, the now this is one guy, but and you know he but he went off on this whole thing and how great it was and how inspiring it was. That's what it takes. It takes sometimes it takes someone from a long way off talking about things. Spark, even the, spark, e- spark. Th- there you go. Even when that person uh, uh, may not be the brightest spark, uh, you know they 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 light a spark, uh, and uh, and and that kind of thing um, leads to kind of a chain reaction. But sometimes this happens slowly, um, and and so this was a decade ago, right? But this, there's this one guy, and uh, what a great guy! But the uh, the the fact of the matter is is that this kind of thing will will take on a life of its own, but it takes it, ha- it happens has to happen slowly with effort on on the part of people like Georgia uh, that are working really really hard. Um, but just because something's hard doesn't mean it's not worthwhile and doesn't mean it's not fun. And this is this this is a struggle, but it's fun and it's fun to be able to make a difference. And hopefully to make uh, to help our patients uh, move through the world a little bit better. It's just challenging sometimes. I feel because we are constantly trying to prove our worth. Uh, but I do see it happening. Like today with the vascular surgeon, you saw how he 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 works with yeah. us very seamlessly, if you like. And he because he did that, he knows our value. So I I just hope that you know it's going to be a thing that most other medical professionals will be doing in the future. Yeah, if you want to say something last for our audience, what is going to be? What I would like and what most people, uh, colleagues would like is to be able to be part of the big team, you know, in terms of taking care of patients and not just the people with diabetes. I mean, to have access so you can go into a, a hospital or a public hospital or a private hospital and be able to knock on a podiatrist store and say, you know, I've, I've got this thing with my foot, can, I, can you see me? And then and what uh, Professor Armstrong said before happens, I mean, you might think that it's a very simple and, you know, a very non-important thing, but um, people who walk into our offices uh, limping 
and then they leave happy. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that probably eight out of 10 patients say to me the same thing. I think I'm walking on cloud. Now, this has been absolutely terrific, though, I'll tell you. Yeah. And, and I, I just say, look, uh, if you're a patient and you're in to see your general doctor, knock your socks off, just take your shoes and socks off and make sure that she or he looks at your feet, especially if you have diabetes, um, and then talk to him about going to see uh, uh, your podiatrist. I think personally that uh, um, it is crazy that people like Georgia can't be doing that uh, more frequently here on this island. But look, there's a lot of things that are crazy and ridiculous and and aren't actually happening. But this kind of crazy, I think this is something that we can do something about, and I think we can make a difference. And I think this is a start. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, it's an honor of five years, uh, our first guest, and hopefully everything goes to the best for the for the for your community. And come back, both oh, of you. you can- Oh, Whenever that, you want. That, that, is, uh, that is so kind. And you can only kind of move up from here, from the bottom of the body. 